Hey everybody, uh, today we wanted to show you how we are seeding a couple of our crops in the field, specifically beets and carrots, um, and using uh, these Stan Hayes or Robin seeders. Um, so this field, just for a little background, um, we had it in our winter cover crop. It was flail mowed, disked once. We came back through, spaded it, um, fertilized our beds, listed them up. Um, and then these beds, sometimes when we're going to put direct seeds in the ground, we'll actually add a rototilling pass onto those beds just to make the seed bed a little bit finer tilth so, um, so that it work, it's a little bit more workable. So if you look here, um, you know, just slightly smaller aggregate size, a little more uniform, but a really smooth seed bed to work into. So these are our um, robin seeders or Stan Hay seeders. These are um, somewhat of the industry standard for vegetables in commercial and large scale organic um, because they're what, we're call, what we call precision seeders. Um, and they can take seeds and really meter them out in a very specific way. And that's why we use them for beets and carrots um, because those two crops need just the right spacing in between each of those seeds, each of those plants for that crop to grow. If you put them down with some of the other seeders that we have where you're just kind of dropping a steady stream of seed, it can be really hard to get your right spacing between those seeds. And then you would have to come back through um, with a crew to actually hand thin um, to get your spacing right. So for carrots, you know, it'd be about every two fingers or, you know, inch and a half or so. And for um, beets, we'd probably go as much as, you know, three to four fingers in between plants. So these um, seeders here, uh, the way they work is they have um, just a tamp wheel to kind of set uh, depth for the cedar. Um, behind that, uh, as with all our cedars, it has a shoe. So the shoe is what carves that um, channel in the soil. Um, on the shoe, it can be a little tricky to see. There's actually a post that has grooves in it. Um, and that shoe depth is going to dictate how deep that trench is, which will mean how far the seed falls into the soil. Um, so this is how we set the depth of our seed with that. Um, this is the hopper that we'll look at in just a second. Um, that's what holds the seed and what meters it out. Um, behind here, again, we have a chain drag and that's just going to capture some of the loose soil um, that the shoe kicks up. It's going to pull it back on top of that trench. Um, and then our drive wheel um, is also our tamp wheel in this cedar. So this, um, this wheel will turn and tamp down that soil to get good soil to seed contact. Um, but also it, this um, will drive the cedar. So it has a, a pulley and belt system here. And as this, um, this wheel moves, um, this belt will move and drive this pulley here, which will work um, the hopper uh, and dictate uh, when the seed comes out. So now I want to take a closer look at um, the hopper and I'll show you a little bit about how this all goes together. So um, we're just going to hand loosen these tamp wheels on either side. Um, and you see that this can slide back and forward. That's how we set the tension on the belt. Um, so that belt will just slide off of our drive pulley here. Um, and then the hopper itself will just slide back and pop right out like this. So you can see a little bit better now, um, this is the post with notches um, that's connected to the shoe um, that sets depth for how deep the seed goes. So if we remove this clip and move that post up or down, we can either have the seed go quite a bit deeper uh, or quite a bit shallower. So here on the hopper, um, one thing I just want to mention is that there are actually different pulley sizes that we can use. And switching this pulley size or the, essentially the gearing ratio um, will speed up how fast our belt moves in the hopper and thus how much seed is put down. So on these robin seeders, we have two options of basically small and large um, on the hopper unit itself. Um, and on the tamp wheels, they actually can rotate and they have a small pulley on one side and a large pulley on the other. So if you just flip those around, um, we can change our ratio that way. We tend to want to put down um, quite a bit of seed, so we tend to leave the large pulley on our tamp wheel um, and the small pulley on our hopper. So to take a little bit closer look at how this hopper works, um, inside this hopper, we'll look there in a second, um, but there are these belts, and the belts are what capture the seed. Um, so if you look on this bottom line here, you can see this is a single line belt with little holes that are spaced. And as I rotate this um, belt, you'll see that this pelleted seed just comes out one at a time. 
as I move it really slowly. And that's what the precision aspect of these seeders is that it really only allows one seed to drop and that we can really determine how wide that spacing is. So looking inside the hopper itself, um, there's just a simple wing nut that we unfasten here. And we'll lift the plate off. So here inside the hopper, you can really see how the mechanism works. As I move the, as I move the drive pulley, you can see that the seed is falling in, just one seed per hole. And then this wheel back here is actually rotating that way, pulling the seed out so that we don't get too many seeds falling out at the same time. So this seed um, is actually beet seed. Um, and so this is a seed pellet. Um, and this is, they coat the seed with some type of kind of clay compound. Um, and if I break this pelleting up, you can see that there's the beet seed right inside. And so this pelleting is really made um, for this specific seeder. Um, they'll give us a seed size on our pellets. Um, so if I look at my, um, my beet seed container, it tells me this is seed size 18 O. Um, and so when I get a belt made for these seeders, I get an 18 O belt. So now I'll dump out the remainder of the seed that's in this hopper. Save that for next time. And because we're gonna switch from beets to carrots, I'm gonna to have to change my belt. So the way that this works is relatively simple. There's a tensioner here. I'm gonna pull that tensioner down. That's gonna allow me the slack I need to just slip this belt right off. On the bottom of these hoppers um, is something called a, a spring plate. Um, and there's a number of different spring plates that you can use. Um, the ones that we have mainly, um, they have three grooves in them. And that's so that we can use it with our single groove on the beets. Um, and when we actually seed carrots, we have um, a double line. Um, but again, we need those three grooves to catch all those lines. The grooves allow for that, those bigger seed pellets to sit in the belt without getting crushed in the hopper itself. So there's our spring plate. So when I put this new belt on, I'll wrap it around my wheels and push my tensioner down. At this point, I will sneak in my spring plate. Um, it is important to note that there is a forward and a backwards on this spring plate. So the short side will go forward because it'll allow the seed to come out between the opening right at the edge of this. You can put this in backwards and the seed will try to come out there and that's not what you want. You'll get a lot of seed pouring out. So I'm just gonna make sure my belt is nice and tight. And I'll give it a couple rotations just to make sure everything's moving smoothly. Once we're all set, we'll pop that back on top. And we'll be ready to keep seating. After the seeders run through, I just want to see what it looks like now that the seed's in the ground. Um, and I do want to talk a little bit about, um, just a little bit more about seed spacing. So um, this is that belt that we use to seed our beets with. Um, when we buy belts um, like this for the stand hay, they come with a chart. So again, I had mentioned that um, this was an 18 -0, so the hole size is 18 -0. Um, And then we, dictate, we specify how many number of holes we want in this belt. Um, what that corresponds to is that based on the pulley arrangement that we have, we're running in the A pulley arrangement here. That will correspond to a certain number of seeds um, per inch. 
um, if we are running again in the A pulley setup. So with a 30 hole belt at the A pulley setup, we should be seeing seeds about every three inches, which is just what we want for beets. Um, if we were running something like carrots, this is the, the same belt that we just put into the carrot seeder. This is actually a 13-0 hole size, so a smaller hole size because the seed is smaller and the pellet smaller. And then the number of holes, this is a 90 hole by two lines. Um, so what that means is that here in the A pulley setup, at a 90 hole belt, we're gonna get a seed every inch, um, but because we have two holes, we're gonna get a seed about every half inch. Um, and that's about what we want for carrots. It's a little bit tight, um, but we oftentimes find that we don't see 100% germination on pelleted carrots. Um, and so that will end up being about a seed every inch to three quarters of an inch, and that's about right for us. So now looking into the soil, um, you can see there's one beet seed that ended up on top, um, which will happen from time to time. But as I pull my seed back, my um, soil back, um, you can see I've got a seed that's laying right there that was maybe a little bit higher than normally would be. And now I'm gonna look just about three inches away and see if we can't find that next seed that again, you see it's really metered very precisely. Um, and these seeds, you know, are really, we're just down, you know, maybe a half an inch um, uh, into the soil, um, which is really all we need for beets. Beets are such a strong, um, resilient seed that they'll come up um, almost no matter where you put them. Um, but here we'll look on the other side as well and see if we're lucky enough to find it. And there, it kind of got bumped over to the side maybe when I was moving around. But you can see again that precision seeding for those beets um, is just what we want.